Well, hello folks. Uh, welcome to one of my favourite games of the past. Well, I think it came out originally on certain consoles around about two years ago, but it didn't hit Steam until I think it was about September last year. Um, Pinball Arcade by Farsight. Uh, which I've recently sort of came back into playing because I've heard that they're bringing out the Adams Family pinball table. It's one of the highest rated pinball tables amongst, you know, people who are really into that kind of thing. Um, but I do love my pinball, and um, I just thought I'd do a short video here, since I've not uploaded a little gaming video on my channel for a while here, about one of my favourite tables, which is uh, 1997's Medieval Madness by um, Williams. It's uh, such a fun table. Because of its flow and because of its speed and because of its symmetry, which, you know, three things quite important to pinball tables, so... Just scrolling through the, the collection of um, tables I've got for Pinball Arcade at the moment. They are about... I don't know if they're halfway. They must be more than halfway to doing Season 3 at the moment. There are several tables out. Uh, quite famous ones, including Black Knight 2000. Uh, high Speed, uh, I've played that on a couple of compilations before. There's not that many out, though, when you look at the, sort of the amount that were in Season 1 and 2. But of all the ones I've got, Medieval Madness is probably the one I've spent the most time on. Still never cracked all the goals actually, looking at that little wizard rules tab there. Never won video mode or activated barnyard multiball. Um, you know, despite the fact that pinball tables are played on just the one little playing surface, there's so much to them. And so much skill and, you know, certain bit... Pardon me, of blind luck involved in them. But this is certainly one of my favourites. Um, like I say, it came out in uh, June 1997. Uh, originally it would have cost about $3,000, give or take, which is, that must be just over 2.2, 2.3 million pounds. Um, although, to buy them these days, uh, you know, real pinball tables being something of a collector's piece, uh, given the cost and the complexity of dealing with such, you know, a large electronic uh, unit, uh, you'd probably be looking at paying about eight grand or, you know, just under 5,000 uh, UK pounds for, for a, a medieval madness machine in decent condition. I mean. A lot of pinball tables deteriorate over time, the electric, electric components deteriorate, the, uh, the rubber and the plastic and pieces and so on, just from the force of getting hit with the ball over so many times, over so many years, just uh, the, the quality lessens. But I'll just jump right in and do a little game here. I'm not going to try and get crazy, I mean, the thing about a pinball table is if you get going, you can spend 45 minutes, an hour, even more if you're even better just racking up that high score, because it is a score based game, at the end of the day you're just trying to get the most points that you totally can. Uh, so I'm just going to run through, maybe show off a few of the modes, talk a little bit about pinball and why I love it, and why I fell in love with it quite recently to be honest. I mean, I remember walking around, you know, arcades on holiday with my folks back in the the early to mid 90s when pinball was probably at its biggest. I mean, it's a, an industry if you want to call that, it that, that's fallen to the wayside you know, in recent years with computer games and so on coming out. Um, I remember walking past pinball machines and not being impressed, just thinking, how can this be a game? There's only like one small playing field and you can see everything that's happening at once. But I don't know, as I've grew older, I've learned to appreciate just how complex it is, these, these machines where there's so much that can go on and so on. I'm just attacking the trolls here, which is one of the six modes you have to do to complete the, the Medieval Madness table. You can complete pinball tables in a sense, I mean there's no definitive end to most of them, they're going to get as high a score as possible, but there's always a way to finish the main mode if you will, or, or uh, rack up a huge amount of points by, well in this case, oh, and there you go, I lose my first ball. Happens sometimes in pinball, no matter how good you are and how matter you're able to save things with nudges and so on, you are going to lose uh, balls just from unlucky bounces and so on. But. I don't really need to care about trying to keep a good run going here because I just want to, to make a nice little short video about what I think is the greatest pinball table of all time. Like I said, uh, the Adams Family one's well known for being, um, you know, well loved among critics, I suppose you could say. But uh, Terminator 2, another one that I think gets uh, quite high ratings. Um, Genie by the company Bolly. I'm not a personal fan of a lot of, no, sorry, not Bolly, Gottlieb. German company. Not a huge fan of most of their tables. They did one called Black Hole, which was uh, quite brilliant at the time. But um, other than that, most of their tables feel quite floaty and quite uninspired compared to the likes of Williams and Bolly, who, who made well, some of the classic tables of, of, of pinballing times. Uh, what I'm trying to do here, really, is hit that little castle section in the middle, 
for the wooden drawbridges. You hit that a certain amount of times and it'll drop to reveal the iron portcullis. Ah, oh, now there's a word that you don't get to say too often. Portcullis. You have to hit that a few more times to, to lower it. Um, it actually goes up for each of the six castles you have to destroy to eventually get to the, uh, the final mode of the table. Um, but for the first castle you only have to hit the iron... Oh, quick little nudge there. Luckily put it in the catapult section. I have to nudge it three times before it opens the path to destroy it. Now by landing the ball in there I've unlocked the multi-ball madness mode in Medieval Madness. Multi-ball is always the most fun part of pinball games because it, it just lets you just go crazy. Whack that ball everywhere you can. It fl you know, colours flashing about. Uh, it's just... It's a beautiful sight in full flow. It doesn't usually last very long because it is quite hectic. But I'll try and keep reasonably controlled here. Becomes like an elaborate juggling game at some point. That's the first one lost and the second one too, so... Unfortunately that multi ball didn't last too long, but it should give us the opportunity to uh, just slow the ball down here to shoot in and get this first castle. Easily done. Now in order to defeat, uh, if you want to call it defeating, the Medieval Madness pinball table, you have to complete six modes to unlock the final battle for the Kingdom mode. So I'll just explain what these six modes are once I catch my ball here. You want to become the Joust Champion, the Patreon of Peasants, the Catapult Ace, the Defender of Damsels, the Master of Trolls and the Castle Crusher. Um, as you can see, I've lit two of the castles in the very bottom of the playing field. The third one's just flashing there. So uh, I would continue, you know, these, these remaining four castles, hitting the, uh, the wooden drawbridge and eventually the portcullis and then destroying the castle. But since I'm trying to show off the other tables, I'll try and go for uh, maybe another one of the modes. I'll try and get the catapult, which is the very far left shot you can see there, where it just says wham, bam, and catapult slam. So I'll try and slot it in there. Ooh, nicely done. And that'll give us our first opportunity at the catapult bonus. So I'll have to stop the... Uh, it doesn't really matter which one I go for, so I'll just slam that skull in there. Now if you do that three times, you get to play that little catapult minigame there. And I think you have to do the whole catapult thing three full times before it lights up the uh, the light to say you've, you've completed that section. The next one here, I think it's the Joust Champion one, which are the two lanes to the far right and just to the right of the catapult shot. I'll try and get one in there. No, I missed it. Try again. I've accidentally nailed the damsel shot there. There we go. Oh no, that was the wrong one. But I did complete a Joust Revolt um, skill shot there. I again, you have to do the Joust Revolt shot, I believe, four times before you have completed that mode. Get a nice little hurry up bonus for shooting the centre of the castle. Get my first uh, peasant bonus. Three of which are needed to light up the uh, the light for the battle of the kingdom mode. Uh, I should probably now try and shoot it into the damsels section, which is that little bit guarded by the red dragon there. Just uh, try not to lose your ball, Craig. Ah, oh, tell. The unfortunate thing about um, pinball is if you push your uh, tilting mechanism a bit too far, like I just did there. You do get the option to tilt like so, uh, but you can only be so subtle with it. If you push it too far, you do get a tilt, which means you lose the ball that's currently in play and you lose any bonus that you've accrued on that ball. Tilting isn't cheating in pinballing circles, if you will. It, it's slight manipulation to get a very slight advantage. As you see there, I unlock the first damsel bonus. Again, I need to unlock three before I get the actual uh, button on the playfield to light up. Uh, this unlocks another multi-ball bonus. Yeah. So again, just another chance to start firing all cylinders. You should get three of them in here. You can get a four-ball um, multi-ball in Medieval Madness, but it's relatively difficult to set up. No, I'll get three of them. Um, it basically involves having to 
do one each of the catapult, the peasant, the joust and the troll shot and then hit the merlin shot to activate multi-ball. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, you need to be very controlled, very precise with each of your shots. Which isn't all that easy when these uh, crazy physics bounces and these things about involved. But I'll hopefully be able to keep this multi-ball going just long enough to squeeze in a few extra shots. Once I hit, I believe it's, it's either 24 or 28 million, uh, you automatically get an extra ball. The, the sort of leniency between pinball tables of how many extra balls you get and how easy it is to, to get them. Even the scoring itself varies wildly from table to table. Um, as you can see, I'm already up to about, what, 25 million? 26 million uh, score here. I believe on tables like Attack from Mars, which was designed by the same guy who designed this one, a man by the name of Brian Eddy, as I silly, sillily lose a ball there. Sillily, that's not even a word, is it? Stupidly lose a ball. Uh, he also designed Attack from Mars, during which I think your first shot can get you like 60 billion if you hit the right thing. Um, so scoring, there's no standard um, from table to table, let's put it that way. Another chance to kill a few trolls here. And grab a catapult slam. There's my extra ball bonus for going over 28 million. 28 million, I mean, it's a decent score to start out with, but when you see the scores that people get on actual tables, it's, it's frightening. People can put a lot of skill into this. There's my third castle destroyed. Now, I've not completed any of the little sub-modes yet, because the one, two, three, four, five, six lights leading up to the castle door aren't lit. So hopefully I'll get at least one of those done before this video ends, otherwise I'll look quite the fool. Ah, oh, there's another ball lost. Just an unlucky bounce. Really, you should, if you're going for a, as high a score as possible, be controlling every shot, nudging the ball so you can carefully get it under control before taking your next shot. But, you know, I, I'm not really trying to play this to get as high a score as possible. I'm just trying to show off the table. Um, I'll get another little bonus here if I can get it in the castle. Or hit the castle, I should say. Not too hard a shot to, to perform, considering you have to do it more than almost any other between the times that you hit that, the gates and the portcullis. Man, I really can't stop saying the word portcullis. And it's just any excuse for that one. Quite unusual to actually get, you know, up past 40 million without lighting a single uh, single sublight yet. It must just be the order I've hit the shots. Lock in the ball there. If I hit that second shot to lock another one, a third shot would activate the uh, one of the, the multi-ball modes on this table. Joust charge two. I believe it's four joust charges that you need to unlock the sublight, which makes sense because uh, there's two lanes for the joust charge, whereas there's only one for the catapult, one for the peasants. Um, the trolls are different. They're I'm not. Even after all the hours I've put in this table, I'm not 100% sure on how you unlock the trolls. Um, I think it's the two small flashing lights next to the wooden gate. If you hit those eight times, I think it gives you an option. Um, I'm the patron of the peasants. As you can see, that third light from the bottom is lit up uh, beneath the castle door. So that's the first of the six uh, sublights I need to do before I can start the battle for the kingdom which is the, the highest scoring uh, bonus on the table. So, let's get a nice little chance to do some juggling. Ah, oh, that was silly. Instantly drained that one. Few things more disappointing than getting a multi-ball and then wasting it to an errant shot that just bounces straight down the out lanes, the names we have for those two uh, lanes at the far left and far right, which your ball can easily disappear under. Chance to build up a little bonus here. Not much though. Oh. And I think that's going to be my last ball, folks. Looks like it. No, I've got one more. Oh well. At least I'll get the chance to break 50,000. Second damsel rescued. This should be. No, damsel three. That should make me a defender of damsels. Yeah, if you didn't hear that, folks, that was just Merlin screaming out, um, notifying the world that I'm the defender of damsels. 
We're saving them from the nasty dragons. After you've done something like, you know, defended from the damsels or done the joust charges or even if you get that far, destroyed the castles, you can keep going for them for more points, but you would have to do the Battle of the Kingdom to switch off all the lights and then restart the entire process from the beginning. So I can keep hitting damsel shots like that, but I'm not going to get any real benefit from it. Um, oh, no, now I've got the trolls option. Trolls can be a bit cagey since they, they take up the, the middle lane there. It, it's kind of risky going for them because it's very easy to ball, uh, drain your balls straight down the middle. But, oh, see? Just like that. So unfortunately, that looks like it's going to be my little end to the run. At least I broke 50, uh, 50 million though. Decent enough score, but probably nothing compared to my uh, my highest scores. Yeah, I've, I've almost got 300,000 on one occasion. I don't even know how it managed that. But yeah, that's been Medieval Madness. I hope you've enjoyed. So uh, I'll probably make some more of these videos for other tables in the future. So uh, yeah, that's been good. Catch us later.